In this webcast, we're going to use the ideas of LCAO to construct the molecular orbital diagram of diatomic fluorine. Diatomic fluorine will be the result of combining the four atomic orbitals on fluorine atom 1 with fluor four atomic orbitals on fluorine atom 2 to produce eight new molecular orbitals. If you remember from sheet 1, there were 10 possible unique ways that orbitals 2s, 2p, x, y, and z on atom 1 and on atom 2 could come together to combine and make new molecular orbitals. We only need eight of them. In fact, we can't produce ten. Rules of molecular orbital theory don't allow us to produce more molecular orbitals than the numbers of atomic orbitals from which the molecular orbitals are derived, so we have to have exactly eight molecular orbitals from a total of eight atomic orbitals. Which two of the ten unique orbitals are we not going to pay attention to, or are we going to say are not important? We can get an idea about that from our generalizations and the ideas that uh, energies must be matched in order to produce the greatest amount of an interaction, the greatest amount of uh, overlap. One of the combinations that we came up with was the sigma s slash p, combination of 2s plus and minus uh, the p orbital, the px orbital. But if you look on this diagram, energy mismatch between the 2s and the 2px is huge. If atom 1 were to combine its 2s orbital with the 2px orbital on atom 2, there would be a huge mismatch. Those two orbitals are unlikely to get together in any significant way. The conclusion of all of that means is that we can ignore the sigma sp and sigma star sp combinations for fluorine because this gap in energy is so large. So what's the result? The result is that we know how to combine the 2s orbitals together to make a sigma s and a sigma s star. Those can be uh, thought of as um, in the molecular orbital diagram like we showed last time. We also know that the 2p x orbitals can come together in an energy matched case to produce the sigma p and the sigma p star. We know about the pi combinations, the pys can come together and the pzs can come together to produce pi type bonding interactions. We know that pi is not going to be as destabilized or stabilized as is sigma, and hence the order here is sigma p and then pi. We also uh, saw the antibonding pi combinations, and so these are four new molecular orbitals that are pi orbitals that combine from the matched 2p cases. And so we're left with, by ignoring the sigma sp combinations, we're left with those eight molecular orbitals. Now, fluorine brings with it seven valence electrons, and I've added electrons into the atomic orbitals, filling them up from lowest. Now I uh, take those 14 electrons all together, and again, I use Hund's rule and apply uh, filling the new molecular orbitals with electrons from the atomic orbitals that they're derived from with electrons filling from the bottom upward, and I'm left with the diagram that's shown here. Remember, two electrons occupy each one of the levels. So there is an interpretation that we can make between the molecular orbital diagram and our Lewis structures. With the Lewis structure, we found that there were six non-bonding pairs of electrons and one bonding pair of electrons. And what you can note in this, um, in this diagram is that there are pairs of bonding and anti-bonding that really would result in no uh, net bonding interaction. So if we look at the sigma s, we can see that there's a filled sigma s and sigma s star, and so they would cancel each other in terms of producing bonding interactions. Similarly, for every pi that's filled, there's a pi star that's also filled, and so there's no net contribution from pi bonding. Take a look at all of those combinations that have filled bonding and filled anti-bonding, you can see that there are exactly six non-bonding pairs of electrons that would correspond to the six lone pairs that we draw on the Lewis dot structure. The only pair of electrons that I didn't circle that didn't have a counterpart in an anti-bonding orbital would be the one that's shown in the dashed line, the sigma p, and that's the orbital that contributes to the bond that we describe between uh, the two fluorine atoms.